Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, I've got a not an unusual request, uh, you know, here oftentimes, particularly as uh, you know, the warmer weather starts to hit, we get people stopping in that want us to press in and out their wheel bearings. I think we've done several, you know, sealed hub assembly wheel bearings on our channel uh, using the hub tamer, which is our, you know, our typical MO going about uh, pressing wheel bearings in and out. But this guy dropped this one off, tried to do it himself. He's got this little mess here. He completely destroyed the uh, circ clip uh, getting it off. He thought he could just smash it out of there and it didn't, uh, didn't work, I guess. See, it's missing a few wheel studs too. This thing looks pretty rough. Uh, so he dropped this off. I wanted to know if I could press a bearing if I had that ability. He gave us a bearing here, some kind of their last bearing. Looks like he's been in there too. This is the look of aggravation, folks. <laughs> so, uh, oh, it came from AutoZone, it says. Got a receipt in there, $39.99. Um, so come along, we'll go out here to the press uh, and we'll, we'll press this bearing in and out because I don't think we've uh, got any videos like that yet. All right, so we'll come out here to the press. And we gotta get this set up. Now this is where I've seen so many, so many people make mistakes pressing these. Uh, this one no longer has a tin shield on it. I don't know if it did OEM. That's what makes using the press on these very difficult uh, because you can see, you know, that's just a very odd shape to kind of stick in the press. So that's why the hub tamer on modern day stuff seems to work, you know, a lot better in my opinion. Fortunately for us, it's got these little flats on the inside here and one here. I think we'll be able to get our press blocks in there. Uh, if not, you know, you can't go pressing on this uh, piece here on the spindle where the uh, tie rod hooks on, because this is cast iron, you'll just, you'll just break it off. You can't really press on, you know, the two ears here where the uh, brake caliper bracket would go, because you'll just break those off. So, you're usually quite limited on what you can do. It looks like our press blocks do fit under there good enough. So, the first thing, I grab the socket, it'll fit our spindle. We gotta press the, uh, the actual hub itself out. Grab a little jack handle here. I'll tighten this up. Run this down. Try to get her centered up. All right. Get her centered up. Give her the beans. Well, there's no drama in that. Sometimes these things press out pretty hard, make pretty good noise. Of course, he was already smashing on this, too. So there's that. It's not uncommon for your half of your race to stick on there. Now, this one, um, gosh, it looks like they're really getting behind you with a chisel and just wailing the piss out of this thing. Well, anyhow, uh, we'll be able to grab a hold of this with a puller and take that off. You can also just take the torch and just psh, nick them off on one side. Uh, I, I think people mentioned they use like a Dremel or something. I don't have a Dremel tool, but um, you know, it would be my habit to either puller, cut and torch, blaze it off. And you can take and cut them off with a torch without even hitting the uh, inner part of that hub too. So this is what we're left with. The bearing looks like it's in pretty good shape. Gosh, the grease is still like new. Wonder why it's changing it. Huh. Well, we don't ask questions, we just do what they ask. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna yank this piece off so we can stick it back in here because this bearing has to be pressed out in this direction. So that's what's next. So we're gonna use this little, little puller here She's seen better days, the end of it's falling off, but it should do the job for us, hopefully. But this big flange that's on here, that's actually part of the seal. So we might have to rip that off first and then get a hold of the race. Uh, we'll see. Sometimes that seal can be pretty resilient and actually pull the race off. 
I'll kind of get this started here. So that basically just grabs a hold of it like that. But like I say, don't be surprised if it just rips the uh, little seal off first. Nope. Ah, crap, that's good. All right, pool. It's a little too tight. Now we'll see if it's got enough mustard to yank it up and over. Either that, we're gonna make a big mess out of this. This is the point where we should stop and actually knock this piece out. But we're not. We're gonna see if we, see if we can just force it. There we go. See? Ah, we win. So there is our race. I'll put that back so we don't lose the tip there. And then we can take our race. We can stick that back in there. Now we got something to push against. So this next part can propose a, a smidge of a problem. So you can see, you know, the bearing where it goes in here, it's gotta be pressed out this direction. You can see it pretty much takes up uh, the whole inside of that spindle. There's not a lot of room around it for a cup. You know, so let's say we had to put a, you know, put a cup here to drive it through. Well, unfortunately, this is the biggest cup that we can fit inside this casting. That makes sense, you know, it just, just barely fits in there. That's fine and dandy, except the ID of this will not accept our bearing. So that kind of sucks. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up on uh, where the strut bolt's on here, and then we're gonna see if we can block it up under where the ball joint goes and give it a little push to see what happens. Um, you still have to be cautious doing this. This is the two meatiest parts of the whole thing. You know, I definitely wouldn't want to support it, like I said, mentioned before, on the uh, tie rod portion or on the brake caliper bracket. Uh, even doing this, you know, even though this is big and beefy, uh, you really have to watch. You just have to watch it. Um, if that doesn't seem to work, we'll stick a flat bar across the middle here where we can at least get the bearing moving first, which is which may be what I opt to do initially. I think we will now that I think about it, is essentially... You know, stick a bar across here, get the bearing to pop free, which is always the hardest part. And then we'll drive it home uh, by standing it up on edge. Hopefully. So let's see. I don't know if we can just stand it up. Oh, look at that. Fits like a glove, and I think uh, looks like our press arbor is going to be big enough. Uh, without any adapters or anything. So like I say, we'll see if we can't just press it and get it to snap free first. Get her centered up. Hopefully it doesn't get our press arbor stuck in there. That's uh... So get them break free is the hardest part, typically. So we shoved the bearing down in. Realistically, we could probably take Big Nasty and just drive it out. But you can see the bearing is the majority of the way out on the back side now. So now I feel comfortable you know, supporting it somehow. However we can. And pressing it the rest of the way out. Oh, we need like a little shim. What do we got here? This is probably too thick. Yeah, it's not 100% even. It's pretty close, but it's already broke free, so I think it's not gonna push very hard. Yeah, push it really easy. There she is. Well, that, folks, is that. Gravy. Uh, what I do at this point usually is make sure the uh, snap ring groove is clean, which they've got a lot of penetrating oil and stuff in this. This inner bore looks, you know, looks pretty clean. Um, 
putting it back together is quite simple because you actually have a flat surface to press on now so you can you know you can hold it right on the flat surface piece of cake all right let's see here's our new bearing we're going to need to get a uh, adapter i just use a little press blocks out of the uh, hub tamer kit we'll get one that fits the outer bearing so we're pushing on the uh, outer race and we'll press this thing in now when you're doing some bearings you have to be mindful some of them with abs they could have the abs tone ring built in to the press and hub assembly they'll have a magnetic strip you know this this one doesn't uh, it's kind of old but uh, you know be mindful of that and the other thing i've seen that you have to kind of be mindful of is a step to outer race where there'll be like four or five thousandths difference from the inner to the outer, uh, believe it or not. Uh, usually that's pretty clearly defined with a line right down the middle, you know, and, and you know, you can hold it up on edge and look at it or measure it. Uh, I think you see that on some Euro cars I've pressed it in and out for people, you know, stepped outer bearings or stepped outer races, kind of, kind of prevents you from putting it in backwards. Uh, so. so get that set up on there. Got a little block. We'll see if we can't get it started straight. That's half the battle with these sometimes. You absolutely have to get them started straight. They, they will go away it's cockeyed. So, I'm gonna go, let's see. Sometimes you gotta get a little hammer, just kinda tap them around. Oh, this one's starting beautiful. she hits bottom what I always say so now that your bearing is in there what you would do at this point if you had a good snap ring which I am NOT putting that back in he said if I don't feel comfortable putting that in leave it out he'll put it in guess what buddy you're putting it in I'm gonna touch that thing with a 10 foot pole um, so there's our bearing it's pressed in inside now so now this is where I've seen other people goof this up uh, you have to be pretty cautious. We have to press in our hub face here, which is pretty well tattered. If they didn't have the other wheel studs, they'd be a lot easier to put in now. Um, we have to press this in. So we're gonna press this into the bearing. The outer race will always go in nicely. You have to support the inner race with something. So when you press it, uh, like I say, it would press in the outer one nice, but when it got to the uh, inner one, it would just push it out and flip your assembly over and cry and it wouldn't be good. So this needs to be supported in the press in this direction with something supporting that inner race. Uh, so you can use whatever, use whatever you got. You know, we can stack this up. We can actually, you know, stack it on the old bearing or something. Whatever it takes. And we have to lower our press. We'll set that down. There we go. And then we'll uh, stick our spindle up here. Got a lot of jacking to do now. These usually start fairly well. Uh, you don't usually see this portion of it getting too off-centered. Um, the other thing, if this was like, uh, let's say you're doing like a Subaru, where it would have independent inner and outer seals. Some of them have seals, so you'd want to make sure you don't push it together without, you know, first putting your seal in. Snap ring, ABS stuff, dust shield if you had to remove that. 
you know, there's a lot of things before you put this on, stop and think, uh, you know, because once you press that on, you pretty much own it. You can press it off, but, you know, you take the chance of having to, you know, get it all wonky again or whatever, so. So there you have it folks, that is how, I mean this thing's a pretty ragtag looking unit here. Um, but that's how you press in a wheel bearing using your standard shop press. Pretty handy tool to have. And like I say, the only reason we did this video is because I know some people have asked me, you know, why I don't use the press to press in wheel bearings. Uh, well, quite frankly, I do this on the car quite a bit quicker than I could take this whole spindle off and then you know now if it has cam bolts in it now you've got to get the vehicle realigned um, or if this had like ABS sensors and stuff like that I mean you guys know how rusty crap gets here it's just a whole lot easier to do this for me uh, with the with the uh, spindle staying attached to the vehicle and because quite frankly the less stuff you have to unhook the better uh, in our climate anyhow so that's that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it answered perhaps some questions or maybe gave you guys some ideas or what it actually takes to press a bearing in and out if you've never used uh, you know, a press tool or uh, anything like it. Like I said, that one's quite a, quite a small one. Um, I've used some pretty, pretty big presses pushing bushings in and out when I was in the, uh, working on the big trucks. Uh, you know, at my dad's shop, we would do, you know, he has a big 100 ton press. Uh, so that, could, that really caused some damage. Makes pretty light work out of these. Um, seen some stuff explode, so be careful using a press. Uh, you can have uh, you store up a lot of potential energy, and then when it cuts loose, it can get ugly. So that's it. Thanks for watching.